Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about the dashboard area and the back end admin area of WordPress. Now, I'm on the home page now. You will notice this is a little bit different to how it looked in my previous video. That's because I have updated the system to the latest version, which is WordPress 3.2, because it actually changes ever so slightly the layout and design layout of the admin back end. And I didn't think there was any point me doing a video on the old one when if you're going to be watching this later on the 3.2 uh, design update to the layout of the back-end admin area is probably what they're going to stick with for you know for a few more updates anyway so hopefully it will stay relevant for a little while anyway obviously if there are any more updates that change any crucial areas of the admin area I can always do another little video to add on to show you any new areas or features and things like that Anyway, you'll notice that I'm now using a different theme. It's fairly similar to the uh, to the 2010 version. This is now the 2011 theme that WordPress themselves have developed for your, for your blog. And actually, it does look uh, a lot nicer, I think, than the 2010 one. We've got some nice little um, animation up here when you click into the search bar. The headers, if I just refresh the page quickly, you'll see the... Try again. There you are, so the header images are on a random selection. There's about five or six of them that it will uh, automatically click through when you refresh the page or click onto another page, although it's not doing it at the moment. There we are. <laughs> as you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same as the previous theme layout-wise. It's just looking a little bit different. So, for example, with comments, we've got this nice little speech bubble image up here with the one highlighted and there are some subtle graphical changes and obviously text changes um, in fact that's definitely a different font being used now which looks quite nice and clean uh, I'll get again we'll be going over themes and appearance and things like that in more detail over uh, not sorry not in the next tutorial but the tutorial after that the next tool will be focusing on plugins how to install them uh, update them activate them edit them and also remove them but for today's one, we're just going to be focusing on a brief overview of the back-end dashboard. Now, what you need to do, to do, what you need to do in order to access that is, if I log out first, and then just go back to the site. So when you come to your site, you've got the meta link down here. If you haven't altered this in your blog settings or in the sidebar settings, that will automatically be there, the little login link. However, if you do need to access it, if you just do wp-admin, and hit enter or return your keyboard, it will come up with your WordPress username and password login box. You just hit login and we'll go into the dashboard area, which is what I've got up here. So, as you can see, it has changed ever so slightly with uh, since the last version update. The dashboard is now pushed right onto the left hand side. We've got a full, full page width being used um, to facilitate the page. Uh, it just makes it look a bit cleaner and I'm finding it's a little bit easier to navigate through some of the items uh, with this cleaner back-end theme. So, the first item is the dashboard, it's your home page basically in your admin area that you come to. And what this page is showing is basically st statistics, um, recent posts, news from the WordPress blog down here, other news links that might be of value or interest to you, plugin information, latest ones added to the library, recently updated, most popular, things like that. You've also got your comment approval section there, the latest one. And you also have got a quick press section here just to do a quick post or blog or whatever you want to do from right from the dashboard, which is quite useful. So uh, the other, the drop down menu, it gives you obviously gives you home, which is this page and updates. And if you click on updates, you'll have something similar to this. If you're on the 3.1.3 version, you will actually have a notice at the top of your screen saying version WordPress version 3.2 is now available, click here to update. It will give you two options when you want to update. It will either allow you to download it and then you can manually upload the files and it will, when you check back into your site, it will ask you to log in and run an update installer. Fairly simple. Or there will be another link which just says update automatically where this reinstall now link is. And that will basically allow WordPress to be downloaded via your site, automatically unpacked, uploaded and installed and once it completes the installer it will give you a link back to the 
dashboard where it will reload the system software up to version 3.2. So if you've already done that, you'll see this page here. Uh, you can obviously, if there's a problem with your WordPress installation, you can click the reinstall now and hopefully any issues or missing pages or settings you're missing can be fixed by that or you can choose to download it and manually upload the files again you can click the check again box up here will just check through your plugins and themes and obviously the main version to check there aren't any more updates any updates for your plugins and themes also appear underneath here with an update uh, link or option uh, to activate that and to get that going if we go on to the post section on the left hand side it's very simple the main page or post shows you all of your posts uh, I think it displays about I can't remember if it's 10 or 20 uh, and before it then starts um, splitting them up into pages and you just get some navigation link down the bottom there should that happen but to edit a post and this is the same if you click add new but I'll uh, show you the edit if not um, it will come up, obviously you can edit the title just with any text and obviously you've got your text here that you can then choose to edit with you've got some format styles here which are being uh, imported from the theme so whether you want it standard, aside, link, gallery, status, quote, image etc it will then apply some presets to it the best way for you to find out what they do is just to go and have a play with it anyway once you've finished editing what you want to do just hit the update give it a second and it'll say post is updated, view post, so we'll open it up in a new tab and just see that and as you can say, see, sorry, hello this is my blog I've just edited that title it says this entry was posted under uncategorized by admin so it will tell you which category it's being posted in who by and you can also bookmark the link as well one thought on my blog, so these are actually it's, it has the system has changed uh, a little bit and it is is looking quite nice at the moment this theme and some of the graphics being used are just just nice little additions to it anyway we'll leave that for now and we'll talk about that in a later video you can add new basically gives you the same setup it's just a blank page for you to use categories allow you to divide or um, sort sorry your blog posts and pages uh, so you know just your blog posts into categories if you've got so many on gaming technology photography movies um, university college schoolwork whatever you're blogging about you can set them up into these different categories and actually then set up different pages to display different categories if you like or you can then sort via different categories as well you can uh, do a, a sort select so that only certain categories are displayed again on individual pages or when a different search term is used and that's fairly simple just fill in the boxes there with the name, the, the URL slug, the parent if there is one for the category so if you've got I think on my site I have blog posts as a major category and then I have technology, gaming, photography etc underneath that and then I have some more outside of that fill in the description so you just know what what's going in what, what post should be going in there so you can keep tabs on that. If we click on to post tags, these are obviously help with um, SEO and search searches as well. And also you can have a tag widget at the side of your site, which will obviously show a tag cloud of your recent tags or tags that have been involved in your posts. So you can just again fill in the boxes to add your new tag and hit the add tag, new tag button button down there. Even the media library is for all your images and things that you want to upload to the site it's fairly simple you, you've got an overview in the main library if you click add new it just gives you a basic uploader you can use select files and choose wherever you want to they there wherever you want to come they want to come from from your PC or Mac or computer and hit upload and normally pretty quick uh, if you have any problems with the flash updater you can use the browser one, the basic one that they have built in instead. It will then give you a load of options once that's loaded to put in for the title, links and things like that. Going on down to links, links are just can be added uh, via the sidebar as a widget to just display some external links from your site. So if you've got some sites, partner sites you want to link to, sites of interest that you regularly visit and you want to share with people, this is the place to do it. And again, a very simple uh, add new, just fill in the boxes. 
you can also add them to different cat to different categories and set the target type as well. Obviously, there's link identities as well, and some more advanced things for um, RSS and stuff like that. But you don't really need to check it all out if you just want to put a link on your site in the sidebar. You can just fill in the the first couple of boxes. Link categories, basically, like I mentioned, blog roll. Rename them into categories. So if you've got some categories for photography sites that you want people to look at or suggest to people, and you've got some sites for technology uh, or review sites or movies, just name uh, add in a category there for those, and it just helps sort it out basically. Pages. Now, uh, people uh, have asked me in the past when using WordPress, what's the difference between posts and pages, or when should I use one over the other? Well, as WordPress was initially designed as a blogging tool or a news tool, a news reporting tool. Um, a lot of people will use posts to post up obviously their new news, articles, reviews and things like that. Whereas pages will be used for more static content such as an about page, a contact page, maybe a gallery page, an FAQ page, things like that that aren't necessarily going to be edited or, or the page content updated on a regular or dynamic basis. If you look on my site, for example, you will see that on my blog I have a home link which goes back to my main website. Um, sorry, no, the home link goes stays on the blog page. There is a back to site link to go back to my main portfolio page. And there's also an, an about page as well, which I then have some sample text on. But if I just click on the link there, again, you'll see it's exactly the same um, as a post edit. As, a, as the post editor basically with one difference over here with the page attributes we've got different templates to use. Now templates are fantastic uh, can allow you to do some fan really fantastic things within the site and I will again talk over these when we go on to the theme uh, uh, pit and appearance customization tutorial a little later. Um, basically they can allow you to have a sidebar, remove a sidebar, have a full content page you can edit it up in all kinds of ways which helps the page become more dynamic and also add some new features to it. The add new pages is exactly the same as before so I won't bother showing you that. Comments, uh, we'll just list off the comments that have been added to your posts or pages on the site where you've got comments enabled. They go into five categories, you've got all, which will obviously display all of them regardless of whether they've been approved, put into spam, trash or pending. You have any that are pending, you can obviously these depend on your settings that I'll show you in a little bit how you've got them set up. If you've got them so that they are automatically approved and don't have to be going to a pending, uh, going to the the pending class, um, then obviously they'll they'll automatically be displayed to the site when a user posts them. However, I tend to like to be able to just check the uh, comments coming through helps a little bit with spam as well. Although there are some really nice plugins out there which will help help you remove any spam that might be coming through to your site. And going on to appearance, appearance has quite a lot of edits and actually I'm going to kind of skip over these because we will talk in depth when I do my customization tutorials for themes and things. But basically the overall uh, theme page here basically just shows you any themes that are currently available to you, which ones are being installed and used at the moment. And you've got down here that are also installed, you can just click activate to switch between them and it also gives you some additional extras, obviously the widget, the widgets and menu are two that will always be there regardless of the theme itself. If we go on to plugins, plugins will just show you any plugins that have been installed regardless if they've been activated or deactivated. So the two I've got here actually aren't activated yet and I've left them that way so that we can I can show you how to activate them, deactivate them, set up any settings they require and obviously remove them should you need to in the next video tutorial. But to add a new plugin you can click the add new there or here on the menu and you can search through for what you'd want. So if I want a gallery plugin I can search through the plugins and it'll give me a list of plugins with a rating, a version and a description. So there's quite a lot there. There's also an editor in the plugins which does exactly the same as the editor that I'll show you later on in the appearance section it allows you to view the code. Uh, mainly you probably won't want to touch most of this unless you want to edit a plugin specifically for um, maybe a Twitter one for example where you need to input your username and password manually if there's no settings set up for it. However, if you do choose to edit any, it, you'll probably be editing CSS files 
the plugins if it's a gallery for example. We'll go on to the users menu down here now. Now users obviously depicts um, each user that can log in to the site. You can restrict um, with some of the custom settings in WordPress and with the use of plugins user roles and what they can and can't do and or see but most people um, will find that the main users of a site will be the administrators or contributors to the site. Uh, to edit, hover over and click edit. Very simple interface for what you need. You can add in some stuff about yourself and obviously it gives you your profile setting here. Move on to tools. Tools is basically um, primarily for importing and exporting your WordPress uh, system files such as the posts and pages, the content for example that you may need if you're moving blog uh, or moving domain, moving hosting, it's always good for a backup as well. So those are two nice little tools there that are included for you. you just hide these menus. In settings you have general settings so it covers things like site title, tagline, the links, email address, what a new user role is, so we've got subscriber, administrator, editor, author and contributor and we'll go over those in a later tutorial as well. Time zone depending on where you are in the world and obviously your preferred date format time you can also add in a custom one with the use of the PHP date format tags uh, and again there's a link to date and formatting there for you should you need it. Writing settings are for the posts that you might be editing so what's the standard post format whether it goes into a default category or not. Um, also formatting, uh, convert, converting uh, emoticons and things like that into a graphic display. You get the gist of that. Uh, down the bottom is also for uh, SM SMTP mail server if you want it to run from the site rather than from an external one. But normally that's not an issue because you'll have your own email addresses on different uh, services, Hotmail, your own personal one, whether it be from work etc. So there's no real need to do that most of the time. Your reading settings, uh, and this is where I'll be showing, I'll be covering a little bit more in the, again, the theme customization tutorial. This one, uh, this is the, uh, probably two, some of the most important settings just here when you're customizing a theme. So your front page, what do you want your front page to display? Now if you want your want to use WordPress but to make your site less of a blog you're probably going to want to use the a static page option here and you can obviously choose which page that comes from and obviously where you want the end your post to obviously if you just want it for a blog and you want your homepage to display your latest posts you might as well leave it on that and obviously you can limit and change how many blog posts to show whether it's full text or summary and things like that if we go on to discussion this talks about the and gives you options for comments and things like that very simple tick box usage, um, when to close comments off on old articles, whether the user has to uh, add in name and email before posting a comment, things like that. And also, sorry, even you've got notification options there as well for email. Media, set media settings, obviously uh, it's just thumbnail sizes and obviously sizes for the image itself. So you can obviously set the s standard default maximum width and height for your images when you upload them and when you obviously embed them into a post or page. You've got some also settings for the embeds and obviously uploading files as well which is stored in wp-content forward slash uploads and you can also upload things to that via your FTP rather than on the site if you're having issues with that uh, just to mention should you prefer just to upload files via your FTP if that's easier for you. The privacy link two options, would you like it to appear in search engines or not? Most of you will probably want to uh, allow that. The last one on here is permalink settings. Now obviously the default setting for this is uh, talking about your URL address. So whereas mine is obviously quite a long-winded one because I put it into several folders. But imagine that what I've just highlighted there, the WordPress is your domain name. So if that was just harryfin.co.uk forward slash blog, the next bit is obviously going to be what identifies your posts. So this is what this code I've just highlighted is here. It's basically, the first option is basically going question mark P, so the post, and it's 
equal to a, va uh, a number value, a numerical value. So for post 1 it would probably be 001 or just 1 and it will keep going up. You can also change it so you can have it set as the day and name of the article so you've got the date and then the name of the article. You can have month and name instead if you don't want the day as well and the name. You can have a numerical one underneath an archive and then it labels it up there or you can have a custom structure. Now when you, if you do use a custom structure It's 1 o'clock. Thank you Mac. <laughs> If you do have a custom structure in use or you want to use one, it is definitely worthwhile checking out the WordPress codec and codex, sorry, um, from the WordPress site codex.wordpress.org. It has a great many links and tutorial, basic tutorial FAQs on how to set up things in WordPress, such as the custom structure in permalinks. Because if you don't get that right, it can obviously affect if your posts are actually displayed or not and obviously fairly crucial to your site so it's something you definitely want to get right if you're going to use something like that however I tend to just use the month and name as I feel that that's one of the I, I prefer it in that sense because it allows me to see in which month it was posted and the and the name and I think that's also fairly simple for anyone looking at the URL rather than P equals and then a number anyway that is Pretty much all I wanted to talk over on the dashboard settings on WordPress 3.2. Hopefully that's been of some use to you and obviously the next tutorial will be going over plugins. I'll be talking you through some of the ones that I use most regularly, some of the ones that are quite useful to you, especially if you're just starting up a blog. And obviously showing you how to install those, activate them, edit any settings you may need to get them running and obviously how to remove and delete them as well, should you need to. The tutorial after that will be the first of the appearance settings, so I'm sorry if you're waiting for those in terms of looking for some good customization uh, tips and things like that. We will be getting to them shortly, and hopefully I'll have the first one of those videos up by the end of next week, because the plugin video will be out hopefully uh, earlier on in the week, so I can try and get two done for you guys. Anyway, I hope that's been useful to you. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment, PM me or email me at harry at harryfin.co.uk. Feel free to check out my site. Twitter and Facebook links are all there on there for you. Once again, thank you guys.